Hey, what is up everyone? My name is Guillaume. This is Thomas Guitars and Basses and with Chris in front of the camera today because we're in California in beautiful and sunny Los Angeles at West Coast Arborist. Uh, Big John, beautiful Big John, is going to give us a tour of the facility, uh, how they uh, not only produce, go through the whole life cycle of urban forest, urban trees and, and all those beautiful various species and basically just take them from that to those beautiful Taylor guitars. Welcome to the Ontario Biomass Campus for West Coast Arborists. I'm John Mahoney. I'm going to be your urban wood tour guide today and just show you a little bit about where some of the wood for Taylor guitars comes from. So right now we're in Southern California. Our company, West Coast Arborists, trims trees for 360 different cities from San Diego all the way to San Francisco and into Arizona. And we have these big biomass campuses where these trees come down and then they get sorted for the best use. So today I'm showing you right behind me, this is a new batch of logs that came in. So this could get turned into firewood, it could go into a chipper, but it's gonna turn into lumber and live on its life in the afterlife as a high-end product. So I just wanna show you, you got some coast live oak right here. We got a big blue gum eucalyptus from Garden Grove US School, you know, uh, USD, the school district. So this was at a school, you know, this tree its whole life got to bear witness to all the little kids growing up. What's gonna happen to that tree when it gets cut down? Well, the status quo has been it just goes into firewood or it's trash and we have to get rid of it. But with our partnership with Taylor Guitars, we're giving these trees a new life and they get to, you know, witness and help create stories. And then back here, we got a couple big shamal ash. So the urban ash tree right here, this is how it comes in. You can see it, you can count the years, a pretty fast grower. I mean, what is that, 40 years? Yeah, pretty interesting. So they come in here and then we will sort this and we'll cut the ends, we'll cut them to the right size, we'll put wax on the end to stop them from drying out too quick. Do you see these kind of striations right here? There it goes, dark light, that's flame figure, right? The curl or fiddle back. So when you cut into that, you will see that. So just looking around, kind of fun to see at the log yard. <laughs> what is on the 814 from last year? Rosewood. Rosewood. Rosewood growing in California. What the heck are you talking about, John? Yeah, you know, we got trees from all over the world. We're the most biodiverse urban forest in all of North America. This is Dalbergia sisu, right? It's got a bunch of famous cousins, Dalbergia retusa, and but this is Dalbergia sisu. And you know, they started planting it in the 70s in a lot of desert communities. It's also a very hated tree because it's very invasive and the roots will go over a mile to find water. So it's kind of a funny, funny thing, but wow. right here in our front yards. That's great. That's the first time I see one with the bark on, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> if you look at the end grain on that side, you can see the dark color on yeah, the inside. Right. It's just weird. So like how some of those stone woods, I just like, I know them guitar shaped, but I don't yeah. know them as trees. I do not. Like, you know? Yeah. Everybody's favorite, best marketing department in wood, right? Walnut, tall, dark, and handsome. Ooh, give me a tan out here so I'd be in the club. Walnut is like, you know, a great wood. So we also sell some wood to Taylor from Walnut. It's not exclusively urban wood, so that's why it's not marketed as an as a urban walnut, but it is used to supply the, the feedstock from, from Walnut. Okay, yeah, I like that there's those crossovers as well. Like it's not just necessarily that one urban guitar, but it's also just part of the general chain. Yeah, you might think, yeah, exactly. It is. It feeds into the whole thing. So if there's a species that matches something that's already in production, we can put that in and uh, help supplement that hardwood market. So just in a, from an urban forestry standpoint, they say there's enough wood coming out of the urban forest, right? Removing from tree trimmings, or tree removals that could supplement the hardwood lumber market by 40% every year. You know, you've heard of urban iron bark and you've heard of urban ash, but we actually put a couple other species in there that, you know, helps help to, to ease the pressure on the supply chain. Some of those species are black walnut, sometimes called Claro walnut, Juglans hinzii or Juglans californica. They're both native to California and we get them, you know, uh, throughout the areas that we work. We also have shamal ash, 
We also have iron bark eucalyptus. We have one called black acacia. Sometimes we call it Tasmanian blackwood, but you know, it's from California too. So the California blackwood slips into the, sh the stream as well. So iron bark eucalyptus is like black, right? When you see them, like when on the, when you guys leave here on the sides of the freeways, they're planted a lot. They're a really beautiful tree, the dark, bark and a to kind of a dark green leaf they're kind of striking in the in the landscape they look quite quite lovely and the, it almost looks like it went through a fire you know it is like black and gnarly and you get these little rubies of sap that come out behind me is the black acacia or blackwood acacia they got so many different names for trees but we'll go with the real one yeah. acacia melanoxalon Brought to the United States in 1849, no, no, 1851, a couple years after the gold rush by Australian nurserymen. Now it runs wild and it's a little bit weedy up in San Francisco in that area because of the local climate. It's not weedy when you plant it down here. Yeah. A lot of the times they would plant like three big oaks, right? When they need to plant oaks with space in between because in 50 years, the oak's gonna be monster. Black acacia's lifespan, maybe 50, 60 years. You know, no, that's a really long, lifespan for a for a black acacia and they would plant those in between the oaks so with the plan and when the acacias die you can pull those out and then the oak has more space to grow so you can see the dark sexy wood here Ooh la la Ooh. probably the you know we had we don't get too many of them this is the best one i've seen in like five years so that is, that, that is a beautiful piece of wood. And we're here just after the rain, so it's all like trippy. Yeah. Just like, oh. And everything has wax on it. So you want the wood to dry out. And we have sprinklers going on these logs because we want to keep the logs swollen. And we don't want them to dry out as a log. We want them to dry out as a quarter sawn board. Have you ever heard of carob chocolate? It's like a vegan chocolate or a chocolate alternative, the fruit from the carob tree. Traded all over the world, right? And then they started to use the seeds as a measuring standard. And when they would measure like a ruby or a gold, how many carobs does it weigh? And that's where the word carrot comes from. Oh man, you should see the, the rock I made my wife out of this. Big old, big old log on her finger. Woo! <laughs> so when we first met up with Andy and Andy came to the yard, yeah. they like walked around, you know, and he, he took, we, we milled up like maybe 10 species and he took it back. And you know, th there were certain ones that were home runs right away and some that needed a little bit more time to work through and see how they perform over a longer period of time. So I know that there's some other species on the back burner, right? But I could only dream of which one I would like to see next, you know, but you know, maybe, you know. What, what happens in your wildest dream? Uh, my okay. wildest dream, there's a Deodore cedar, which is the national tree of Pakistan. It's a holy wood in the Hindu religion, common planted around here, it smells like amazing. I want to smell it. And then camphor is what they make Vicks Vapor Rub out yeah. of. So mentholatum and camphophenique. So when you cut open that wood, oh my God, it is like, and then the combination of the two, woo, you'll be feeling good for weeks. Get in there at right, that broken egg. I'm gonna try a fresher one. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wait, don't move. Oh my God. Yeah, right? Wow. Come get us. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, this is the side effects. So they regulate how much camphor oil they put in Vicks Vapor Rub. Yeah. And two milligrams of pure camphor oil will kill you. But <laughs> up until that point, the number one side effect is giddiness. And you can tell I have a little jar every morning that I get into. Oh, fascinating. You might have heard me say uh, urban forestry. What the heck is urban forestry? Well, this it's a forest that is in an urban environment, right? Not in a natural forest, but the forest that we build around the places that we live. And urban forestry is insanely important, right? Uh, if you're learning or if you have shade on your house, your power bill goes down. There's so many benefits to having trees around the places that you live. So when we talk about urban forestry, it's just forestry and forests around the places that we live. And that's the source for all of this material. None of this material has come down from a forest or was cut for timber value. It's all salvaged from the urban forest.
might be wondering to yourself, why the heck would you ever cut down a tree, John? They're the greatest thing ever. You know, they're beautiful. They're the best carbon sequesters in the world. Why would you cut down a tree? They bring so much beauty. Well, they're huge and they're heavy and sometimes they can be a hazard, right? If they fall over, uh, if a tree falls in the city, do you hear it? Absolutely, you know, it's, it's gonna come and could crush you. So this is a great example of something going on the inside of the tree. The life of a tree is all on the outside underneath the cambium layer. So if your tree is, has leaves and looks healthy, does it mean it's healthy? Not necessarily, because you got this big rot on the inside and that could cause the tree to fall over. We do tree care for the whole life cycle from seed all the way to the afterlife. We want to be good stewards of the urban forest. We love trees. We want more trees out there, but more trees in the ground means more trees coming out, right? On YouTube, I think there was a billion trees planted, right? Elon Musk, everybody's putting money towards planting trees. Does anybody think about the life cycle and what happens when a tree comes down? So we're really trying to be a good example for the rest of the tree industry to say, this is a bio resource and it should be kept you know, alive while also planting more, you know, but just make sure you have a way to, for salvation in the, in the end. Okay. For every city that we work with, we have an inventory of their trees. And every night at seven o'clock, anytime a new removal gets added on by one of the cities, we made a list that it counter, uh, it uses this list, if anything on this list, we get an email alert that this specific tree was added to a removal list, mm -hmm. right? We don't want to go out there and saying like, Shamalash should be cut down. Yeah, We are pure salvage, right? We're not influencing like these trees coming down, but when they do come down, it's nice to know yeah. a week before it happens so that we can make proper arrangements to yeah. make sure that that wood gets utilized to its full potential. Yeah. Sometimes when trees are cut down, you know, it's easy to cut a tree down right while you're standing, right? in between your shoulders, mm -hmm. you're losing three feet of that tree. So yeah. when these special trees come up, we ask the crews, hey, maybe take a little bit more time, go a little slower, mm -hmm. and we can be good stewards of this material yeah. rather than just hacking it up into a bunch of unusable pieces. Just for example, Menlo Park, that's where like Facebook is, right? They got yeah. a lot of money and they love trees. A uh, eight inch caliper tree is a heritage tree. So if you have a tree that's eight inches, you have and you cut it down, you have to plant like 40 more trees. Oh, uh, okay. A city over here has no rules on heritage trees. Mm. And you can, if you want the tree removed in your front yard, you know, so there's old, you know, ways of doing things, old plant pallets, you know, which trees should you plant? Yeah. So we're trying to bring that up to 2024. Yeah. And really try to plant trees that are gonna be successful a hundred years from now. A lot of our native plants, this is also territory. Some people get, you know, native plants versus non-native plants. Mm. A little battle, I don't want to be controversial or anything. But a lot of the nature, natural native plants here are stressed. Mm. It's a hotter climate. They were doing great for the last, you know, millennia, mm. but maybe they're not supposed to be here now with the heat. So we got to bring in trees that are going to thrive over the next 100 years. What we're doing now is we're querying the in inventory software to look at, you know, different uh, species. And the way we use this is if the city ever decides that one of these trees is hazardous and needs to come down, it gives me an alert and then I can reach out to the person that's going to be removing that tree and say like, whoa, there's salvation, you know. Mm. We're blessed, you know, it's staying out of the firewood pile, it's staying out of the chimney and it's going straight into your ears. <laughs>explain a little bit of the quarter sawing process first we'll cut the log directly in half like this then we end up with a half a log then we will cut it down lengthwise and we'll end up with a quarter so the rings of the tree are running like this 
So in order to get vertical grain boards for an acoustic guitar, we will take a piece like this, and then we will take a piece like this. Then we'll take a piece like this, boom, boom, boom. So we will cut and then flip the log. So that's what the process you're gonna see on the sawmill next. So these boards, the rings are standing straight up and down. He's gonna slice right into it. I'm gonna turn this into four pieces. So he's taking that quarter and he's working it down. So he'll take two pieces off there to make it nice and square. And we'll get a couple billets off of that section. And then he'll start flipping the log back and forth in order to get those vertical lines. So he's cutting a reference point where he's referencing off the outside of the tree. A lot of times when you cut lumber, you'll trim up the outside first, but that will cause fall off on the grain. We want the grain to follow the direction of the guitar, right? We don't want it going sideways. So right now he's truing it up to that and uh, cutting it from the inside out. It looks simple, but he's actually doing a lot of complex thinking on how to get the best part in the end. Oh, and you can't see it on this side, but that is a massive quarter sawn board. I mean, I can tell everyone in the room is really excited. That's not gonna be hard to get beautiful two-piece billets out of there, you know. You're almost, almost wide enough for a single piece electric, you know. Ooh. So we get up close here, I'm gonna show you. Right here, this is a pruning wound. So when the tree was a lot smaller, they cut that branch. And so you can tell this is from the urban forest because in the real forest, nobody's trimming branches off with a chainsaw. And this is a proper prune. You can tell a lot about how it was cut. So, you know, a fungus would land on the open wound and start to decay the wood. That's where all this color comes from, spalting. But the tree grew over itself and it stopped the further decay. Woo, woo, creamy. So right here, you got these cathedrals. That is a flat sawn section. So you see these cathedrals? We don't make a guitar out of this piece. But long straight lines means quarter sawn. So we'll get all guitar parts out of here. Maybe this section will go to a piece of furniture, right? None of it's going to waste. It's all being used in some capacity. Just the cream of the crop goes for Taylor. So these sticks allow for airflow. Otherwise you'll get a stain across from a wood stick. Yeah. Today what we're actually cutting is electric billets and spreads for Powers Electric. And so that can handle a five inch piece, a six inch piece, or a nine inch piece. So that's, you know, cause you have to get creative, right? And that's why the four piece tops are coming out, four piece backs, because you wanna use more of the whole tree. And that allows us to not put so much pressure on our natural resources. So we sort it all then, and then we will edge them and they will get the edges cut off and we'll cut them to length give them a triple, quadruple dose of wax on the end because we don't want them to, to, to dry out at all. Then we'll wrap it with lumber wrap, say a prayer, go to church every Sunday, and then we'll send them down to, to San Diego. So we have so much volume of wood. And if you're splitting firewood, have you ever split firewood before? With an ax, even more, okay, with an ax, if you have a knot, you're not gonna be able to split it, right? Because in softwoods, the knot is a thousand times harder than the wood next to it. So if there's knot, really hard. So the firewood guys also like the guitar wood because <laughs> it splits apart really easily and it makes everyone's job way more easy. So if it's too big or too kind of gnarly or it's got full of pitch and sap and sticky, it's not gonna be great for firewood too. So we have to decide, right? Mulch, even though you don't hear me like promoting mulch all the time, Mulch is an awesome product, right? Yeah. It helps retain water. Bees like it. They get the little scales on the bees and they go climb through the mulch and it cleans them up. So that's awesome. But a lot of the greenhouse gases will slowly get released from mulch and mulch will eventually just disappear. So here's a carbon bank for like a couple of years. Whereas a guitar is a Swiss carbon bank forever. <laughs> you know, you take good care of it, that carbon is locked up literally 
carbon from Southern California tailpipes locked up in a guitar. You know, that's like wild. That brings us to the end of our tour here at the West Coast Arborist Biomass Facility. And I just wanted to mention a little bit, you know, on the importance of using these woods. These woods are available, right? We're planting more trees than we ever have in our urban forest. And that means more trees are gonna die eventually and come out. So, you know, to, re to utilize this bio resource that used to go in the trash uh, is an important step in the music industry. And it's just an awesome thing personally to see this stuff, you know, not going into the greenway stream and living on and telling new stories all around the world. It, you know, it's a really interesting thing to consider when you look at the future of where materials are going to come from. I love building guitars, and I love building guitars out of wood. But we also know that the world as we know it is changing, right? So if I look five years in the future, 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future, I want to leave everyone who comes behind me a few more choices than yeah. what I'm faced with, yeah. right? So that means we need to be better stewards with the materials at hand. Well, when we look around, one of the things that came up that, that caught our attention was, gosh, there's all these trees in every city all around us. You know, you let's say you're in an airplane, you're flying into a city, and you look down as you come in for a landing, you go, man, even, you know, in Los Angeles or San... Billions of trees. It's surprisingly green, right? Because all over the place, trees are planted. They're planted for cooling, for shade, for, to control soil erosion or windbreaks, all kinds of different reasons. And at the end of their life, most often they're chipped up for mulch. Well, that's no good. That doesn't work. So clearly there are some other opportunities that we could use, we use this material for. And so we got introduced to, uh, we were introduced to some friends at West Coast Arborists who specialize in maintaining all the trees in all the cities throughout California. Well, come to find out, they were a very forward-thinking company. And they had, they had foreseen a day when these trees would have value to somebody who wanted to make something out of it. And so we became pretty close friends in the last number of years and have started to build guitars using wood from reclaimed city trees. As a tree gets old, it's taken out so it doesn't you know, fall over on a car or a person or something. And a new one's planted in its place typically. But you look at this tree that came out and went, wow, I could turn this into a guitar or many guitars and give this tree second life. It's one of the most beautifully circular yeah. uses yeah. of a material that I could think of. So we're using uh, shamalash as the species, but we call it urban ash for some guitars. And more recently, we've introduced a couple of models built out of red iron bark, which is a, a urban sourced wood. I had all my life, I had been around these trees. I'd never once tried building something from it and come to find out it's become one of my favorite tone woods. Just absolutely incredible material for the back and sides of an acoustic guitar. Such a nice surprise to see that that uh, outside of the exotic wood world, there's so many things to discover, right? And so many hidden yes. uh, precious uh, wood types and, and, uh, and sources. Yeah. And you think of exotic and go, well, someplace in different parts of the world, uh, let's say if you go to India, you look at rosewood and that's firewood. <laughs> it's common there. For them, it's not exotic. It's not exotic at all. You know, they look at something like what we consider construction material and go, well, that's an exotic wood, yeah. you know? And so you look at uh, the red iron bark, that's a eucalyptus species. That's kind of uh, the close family relation. And it's common in different parts of Australia where it originated from. And it was brought here as an imported material and grown because it did well in this climate. And so it has its own past. It has a, 
there's a thing to it, yeah. which is pretty wonderful. And so I was thrilled to get introduced to it and have been uh, really enjoying building guitars with that. Absolutely. Um, now, you also have this new series coming out right now, the 50th anniversary series. Let's uh, let's talk about those guitars. Well, it's, it's really it's a, a variety of series because as Taylor Guitars, we've been in business for 50 years now, five decades. That's an, that's quite a milestone to achieve. You know, it's it's one of those things you see coming in the future. You go, boy, when we get to 50, that's going to be a thing. Yeah. Well, the time arrived. And so we're here in our 50th year as guitar makers. And so we, throughout the course of the year, we'll be introducing a number of different models as kind of commemorative pieces to celebrate the occasion, all through up and down throughout the line, because you know that's something we want to celebrate with all the Taylor players. So you'll see 50th anniversary models up on the high end of our the pinnacle of our craftsmanship as presentation series guitars, all the way down into things like our GS minis. There's a number of different models throughout that that we're, we're really excited to be introducing. Wow. wow. Um, what are the first models that, that come out right now? The first models that, that I'm thrilled about, we have an 814 Builders Edition guitar. It's an instrument we introduced just a year ago, but it's such a beautiful representation of our current craftsmanship. It's like the cutting edge of our guitar making ability. We're building an iteration of that with a California redwood top, a reclaimed redwood top on it. It's a beautiful sounding guitar, wonderful playing instrument. As well, we have an American Dream 14, an 8014 with a cutaway. Now, the American Dream series is a, it's a favorite of mine because it's such a beautifully, elegantly simple instrument. It's like everything that you need a guitar to be without any of the lavish decoration. It's just beautiful in its, in its humility. So we're introducing that in our popular Grand Auditorium cutaway body shape. Later in the year, we'll have this 217 instrument that's uh, for the first time bringing the, the Grand Pacific shape into the uh, Tecate built guitar. It's another one of my favorites. So there's there's a variety. There, another one that's a, that's a real fun one to play is a 314 model. Oh, it's, that's a, it's a quintessential Taylor guitar, yeah. quintessential model, the working musicians high quality professional instrument. And that's, uh, that's a really special piece. Uh, what is gonna be the, the spec on that, the, the 314? Is it gonna be traditional wood choices yeah, and some it'll be different fairly traditional, very Fairly traditional, because I, I love what that guitar is. So I didn't want to get too far away yeah. from the thing. Of, Man, it's a great flavor. It's, yeah. it's a wonderful instrument to play. So it's a spruce top. It'll be sapelle on the back and sides, beautiful, elegantly shaded top and a fire stripe pick guard. It's a really neat piece. I'm looking forward to playing these guitars. I picked up the uh, the American Dream already. I'm yeah. not sure where it is right uh, now. Right it's on the other side, yeah. Uh, and I've, I've heard you play the, the, the 200 series. Yeah, they're, and, they're uh, great instruments. Wow, wow. Okay, uh, I would love you to play a little sure. and uh, play us out. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for walking us through the new series and also to explain the, the collaboration and this, uh, this, this whole thing uh, with the Urban Forestry, which is, I think, I mean, it's hard to argue with that. That is, that has to be the future, right? Yeah, it has to be it's one of the. It's one of the elements. Okay, so another way you could think of it, there's no one arrow in your quiver that's going to get you everything you need. But what we're looking to do is diversify where and how materials arrive at our workshop. So some of them will come from tree farms, plantation grown. Some of them will come from our own managed forests. Some of them will come from a city street near you. Thank you so much, Andy. It's uh, it's awesome, and you guys take it easy. Uh, let's let's hear some guitars, and uh, yeah, Nam Show 2024. Bye bye.